What's going on, guys? It's Jimmy here. We're seeing some big news here across the United States. We're seeing major states change their minds on vaccine mandates. That's right. And we're also seeing vaccine news that's pretty alarming. And this is coming directly from massive major studies with tens of thousands of people. And it's affecting, well, a lot of people. I'll give you the details here on that in this video as well. Also, the economy added 517,000 new jobs in January, actually puts unemployment at a 53 to 54 near uh, new low. That's right. So just unbelievable how many people have gone back to work because of inflation. <laughs> you guys let me know your thoughts here on this. Uh, President Biden says that this is a great thing. You guys let me know your thoughts on this, but here's what he has to say. I also learned that the unemployment rate fell to 3.4%. 3.4%. That's the lowest in 54 years. In fact, the last time unemployment rate was that low was May of 1969. Think about that. And what's more, black and Hispanic unemployment are near record lows. This matters. More working age folks coming to the labor market looking for jobs last month than have in a long while. That is, remember all the talk about no one looking for, we need more people coming into the market. Well, more people are coming into the market looking for jobs and getting jobs. A positive sign for the health of the economy going forward. And even as the job market reaches historic highs, Inflation continues to come down. Inflation has now fallen for six straight months. Gas prices are down more than $1.50 a gallon since their peak. Food inflation is falling as well. And as inflation is coming down, take-home pay for workers is going up. Real wages are up. Wages for lower-income, middle-income workers have gone up even more. A couple, a couple of that with a 2.9 percent economic growth last quarter. And here's where we stand. The strongest job growth in history, the lowest unemployment rate in 54 years, manufacturing rebounding at a faster rate than in the last 40 years, inflation coming down, real, races, real wages going up, but moderately going up, not going through the roof, the economy growing at a solid clip. Put simply, I would argue the Biden economic plan is working. For the past two years, we've heard a chorus of critics write off my economic plan. They said, it's just not possible to grow the economy from the bottom up and the middle out. They said, we can't bring back American manufacturing. And they said, we can't make things in America anymore. That somehow adding jobs was a bad thing. Well, or that the only way to slow down inflation was to destroy jobs. Well, today's data makes crystal clear what I've always known in my gut. These critics and cynics are wrong. While we may face setbacks along the way, and there will be some, there's more work to do, it's clear. Our plan is working because of the grit and resolve of the American worker. <clears throat> We're going to keep lowering costs for families, from lowering costs in health care, prescription drugs, clean energy, because we've passed that legislation. We're going to be rolling it out this whole year. We're going to keep seeing shovels hitting the ground all around the country to rebuild the infrastructure and supply chains manufacturing more here at home and in, in communities across the country that were too easily written off for dead. We're going to not only see jobs coming back, but a sense of self-worth and pride coming back. Nothing worse than when a city has a major manufacturer leave shut down and all of a sudden uh, your kid getting out of high school or college says, Mom, we got to move. Nothing here for me anymore. Nothing here. Well, I'm intent on changing that in the heartland as well. So what do you think? Do you think Biden's economic plan is working? Let me know your thoughts here in the comments. We have seen inflation come down. I think it's for six months in a row here. But is it enough? Is it enough? And do you feel like inflation is coming down? Um, does it feel that way? Because the problem here is we're seeing um, the numbers of inflation come down, but a lot of people tell me they're not feeling it. You know, the problem is, is we're seeing like home prices come down, car prices come down. But the problem is, is that the interest rates have gone through the roof. 
So the payments, if you go to buy a new car or buy a used car or lease a car, the payments haven't really come down. The sticker price has come down, but you have to pay more in interest. So it it equals themselves out. The home price itself that you buy may have come down, but then the interest rate is higher. So are you really saving? And food prices haven't come down. So are you saving? Gas prices came down from where they were almost a year ago at the high in June, but now they're starting to creep back up. So, I mean, you know, it's not, it's not definitely not the greatest here. You guys can let me know your thoughts here in the comments. And we're seeing a lot of news right now about vaccines, people being skeptical here right now. And we're seeing actually a reversal of trend here, even from the bluest of states. Take a look at this. Yeah, so I'll start with this, and then I'll get to this study here, which is making a really big news right now. So California won't require the vaccine to attend schools. California being the largest state in the country uh, by a long shot population-wise. This is a reversal from Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom's 2021 announcement that the state would add the vaccine to its list of mandated vaccinations for kids to attend schools. So this is a complete reversal. And you guys can let me know your thoughts on this, but some people are happy, excited for this, and some people are not excited for this, saying, you know, obviously they don't feel safe without people having it. Some people are saying, well, we're happy that we don't have to get it. It's, you know, a, a complete, you know, <laughs> different sides of the spectrum here. State public health officials said they still, quote, strongly recommend immunization of students and staff. They added that any changes to the vaccine requirement are properly addressed through the legislative process. Yeah, this also comes here as really big news, more and more coming out here about this study. And you can see here the study that confirms the link between the virus vaccination and temporary increase in the menstrual cycle length of women. And this is directly from the NIH.gov, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. So this is a government website publishing this. So this is a pretty credible source here, guys. It says here, I'll zoom this in, a large international study has confirmed the findings of a previous U.S. study that linked vaccination with an average increase in menstrual cycle length of less than a day. The increase was not associated with any change in the number of days of menses, days of bleeding. Funded by the National Institutes of Health, the new study included data from nearly 20,000 people from Canada, United Kingdom, the United States, Europe, and other parts of the world who received any of the nine different vaccines. Quote, these findings provide additional information for counseling women on what to expect after vaccination. And it says here, a change in cycle length of less than eight days is considered within the normal range of variation. Now, why is this when we're talking about the vaccination for a virus? What does this have to do with the menstrual cycle of women? Why is this being affected? A lot of people are wondering the answers to these questions. And this is pretty concerning for a lot of people, right? And you can see it says right here on this webpage, although small menstrual changes may not be meaningful to healthcare professionals and researchers, the study authors wrote, perceived changes in a bodily function linked to fertility may be alarming to those experiencing it and could contribute to vaccine hesitancy. So let me know your thoughts here in the comments. On the other hand, you also would wonder if you 
caught the virus, when you caught the virus, what the side effects may be as well, because you do have that. So you kind of got away, because again, I'm just a realist here. I just kind of think through all the uh, kind of things here. Um, what are the side effects from the virus as well? But you, you really got to kind of wonder here, why is this affecting women's menstrual cycles? <laughs> so let me know your thoughts here in the comments. We've seen a lot of stuff like this here lately, and I'll keep you up to date here on my channel here. So if you haven't yet, make sure to subscribe down below to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon afterwards because I cover a lot of things here that you won't see on the mainstream news. You won't see this probably on your 9 to 5 news channel. So make sure to subscribe and click the like button after you do. I'll keep you up to date here. Here's some videos you can watch next. Here's another video that you should watch about vaccines with some concerning data as well. And here is a video with some actually some good news from the Fed. So click on one of those videos next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.